All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your Steam Pro, or not your Pro Steam, but your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller up to Steam and use it to play games on Steam. So the first thing we want to do is open Steam, go to the upper left-hand corner, click on the Steam name, click on Settings, and in the left-hand sidebar here, go to Controller. Underneath controller is where our controller will pop up. We want to make sure that the toggle here, enable Steam input for Switch controllers, is toggled on. If anything in this setup looks different for you, make sure you've got the Xbox extended feature support driver installed. Some of the stuff changes for that. If it does and it looks different, I'm sorry. I was messing around and it immediately installed that when it first got updated. So to add this controller to our computer, you can plug it in and it kind of works. Uh, mine's not behaving right now, so we're going to do it with Bluetooth. So to get to Bluetooth, we're going to go into our system settings to go to Bluetooth and other devices. And I'm going to hold up my controller and on the back, there is a button next to where you plug it in. I'm going to press and hold on that until that bad boy starts to flash and have an opinion. There's like a little light back here or something. Hello, Mr. Light. I know you have charge. I just charged you. So anyway, we're gonna press and hold on this button until the other little light starts to flash and have an opinion. And then once it does, we should be able to go into here Go into Add Device, and then right here at the top is my Pro Controller. And then once you've got that connected, it should say, yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, you can close this window, and it should have immediately popped up here at the top of your Steam window as, like, you can turn on and off rumble settings and all that good stuff. Um, it shouldn't be blank at the top if it's properly connected. So we can do things like turn on or on the, off the rumble, this has positional support data, uh, so you can turn off like the gyro motion and steam haptics because the Nintendo controllers have fancy haptics in them that you can use to tell position. Uh, you can turn that on and off. You can use the Nintendo layout where it swaps around on screen like some of the button stuff that would normally be different on an Xbox controller to make it less confusing. Doesn't always work for all games, but enough of them do that they added it. Um, so your mileage may vary. You can turn that on and off. You can begin the test here to test that all of the buttons do button things and they're not broken. If they don't seem to be bound correctly, you can go here and click on setup and then run through like press this button and bind it to whatever you want it to be on your controller. So you have that option as well. So that's nice to be able to test out and rebind keys through the controller. You can go through the calibration and advanced settings where you can mess with stick drift by increasing the dead zone. More important for the Joy-Cons because they get beat up more, but you can do that here for left and right joysticks to increase it. I'll do a full tutorial on that. Um, you can also cal calibrate the, the little gyro in it by setting it on a flat surface and hitting calibrate in case it's like freaking out too much when you're just holding it still. It's, it's freaking out a little bit. Should I calibrate this? <laughs> nah, it's all right. It, it'll auto calibrate whenever you put it down. So if I put it down right now, it'll start to calibrate all on its own. Boom, it's calibrated. It's not bad, actually. Okay, so that's that. And you can also turn off rumble and haptics through this menu as well. About the only other thing down here is turning on and off support for certain controllers or certain behaviors from the controllers like guide buttons and stuff. And then down here, you can change the layout for using your controller on the desktop or guide button cord layouts. I'll explain those more in detail in another tutorial. The important thing to keep in mind is most of the setup for this is automatic now. You just plug it in. If it's detected, it works. And then it like you can toggle on full support here by toggling this switch on. And then it'll mirror by default a standard Xbox controller layout because it's all these controllers have a similar layout. It's just they're, they're different labels, and the Joy-Cons are split in two. So I hope you found that helpful. This has been how to mess with your controller and add your Pro Controller to Steam to play games on your computer. 
If you want to remove this from your computer because it's misbehaving or it's not behaving correctly with your switch, you can go down here into your Bluetooth settings, find it on the list and say remove device. And when you confirm, it might do like mine did. It did a little buzz where it's like, no, I want to live. And you're like, no, you're getting disconnected. And it's like, no, what a cruel world. So that's it. I hope you found that helpful. It's a lot simpler than it used to be. But also because there's less settings to mess with, it can be a little bit more maddening because it's hard to fine tune things if it doesn't want to behave. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. This has been a look at how to do all that and I'll catch you next time. Bye.